important thing is to make a contribution, some sort of a contribution to society. That's what I always considered, and I thought science is the way to do that. I was on my way to, to the West Coast, and I had never seen Yellowstone before, so I came in the south entrance. I got out of my car, and there were these thermal areas that were just spreading out from the hot springs into the lake. I was stunned by all these microbes that were living in all these hot springs, and nobody seemed to know anything about them. As an ecologist, I thought this would be something very interesting to study. I uh, contacted the National Science Foundation, and they gave me a research grant to work on high temperature systems in Yellowstone. Because of the high temperature, most of the ecosystem that you would think about, an ecosystem of plants and animals, completely gone. And so you have a, a unique ecosystem, which is just microbial, which is unusual for a bacteriologist to have a pure culture right in nature. I found bacteria live, really living in boiling water. That was pretty spectacular when that happened, because I, I hadn't expected that. June 20th, 1964. Effluent at 82 degrees. This is the water was flowing out. Very heavy growth. Definitely living. The way I discovered these was this put microscope slides into these boiling pools. You leave those in there for a few days and pull these slides out and there is this film on here. Take them to the lab and look at them under the microscope and every one of these slides had bacteria on it. That was probably a eureka moment, I suppose. So we started small and work that gradually got bigger. I brought along an um, undergrad student who was working in my lab, whose name was Hudson Freeze. I said, well, maybe we should try to culture some of these bacteria. I think it was in 1969, we decided we should publish a paper on this because nobody knew what it was. I described it as a new, a new genus and a new species. A lot of people worked on it then. Eventually, people started looking at DNA polymerase of Thermos aquaticus. Somebody discovered that you could take the DNA polymerase and if you put a little primer on one of the strands, the DNA polymerase would copy the second strand. And that's what led to the ability to amplify DNA to almost any amount you want. You need an enzyme that would be stable at high temperature, which is what Thermos aquaticus had. The existence of that organism, which occurred because of basic research, made it possible for somebody to look for a DNA polymerase that might be useful. If we hadn't deposited those cultures in the American Type Culture Collection, they wouldn't have been available to researchers where this polymerase chain reaction was invented. This is why basic research is so important and the more knowledge you get, the better. This is, so you recall, of pool A. There's pool B, C, and D. It was only pool A that turned out to be interesting. <laughs>